What's going on guys? My name is Hussein from the Geo Database team here at Esri and today I thought I'm going to make a video discussing uh, another feature in attribute rules that we didn't talk much about uh, in 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 the in the user conference or the diff summit or even in in GeoNet and it's called the batch calculation and rules. Uh, these are special type of rules that are executed on demand. So uh, in this video, I want to talk about it a little bit. I'm going to show you how they work and what's the benefit of using them over uh, your classic calculation or constraint rules. I'm going to explain the difference a little bit. How about we jump into it, guys? So, guys, for the longest time, we know how attribute rules work, right? So, you add an attribute rule to a class and you specify whether this is a calculation or constraint rule, and based on that, you specify on which trigger this rule will execute, whether you're when you're inserting a feature, you're deleting a feature, or you're updating a feature. And based on these events, uh, the attribute rule module will kick in and execute these attribute rules based on the arcade script that we basically write. However, that's not almost feasible because you might have existing data and you want to run these calculation rule on your existing data. Okay. In order to do that, we refer to these new type of attribute rules called as batch calculation rule or the validation rules, which is equivalent to the constraint one. And basically when we run these batch calculation rules, the calculation rule will execute on either the current extent or the full extent or a version or based on the certain parameter and will execute all the attribute rules on these rows. Okay, I'm going to show you in this example here that I have where I have a point class and a polygon class and I have a batch calculation rule assigned to these point classes and all this rule does is, is literally finds the intersecting polygon and gets the centroid and fixes itself to be the centroid of the feature. So that, that's what it does. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and run the calculation attribute rules show you and as you see once the evaluation is finished all these point features are now at the center of the polygons because that's the rule i wrote so in this video i want to show you how can we create batch calculation rules i'm going to go through the uh, process of publishing attribute rules enabling the validation capability on on the arcgis uh, enterprise so you can run this evaluation rule add the error classes add all that stuff and work with the and consume finally consume and evaluate the attribute rules how about we jump into it guys okay guys so here i have two feature classes one point class and one a polygon class this these are the two classes we saw earlier and what I want to do here is I want to add a batch calculation rules. However, batch calculation rules are only available uh, as of 2.6.10.8.1 on branch version data. So that means we have to do everything that branch versioning needs to do, right? Enable editor tracking, add global IDs. I mean, you have, you have to add uh, global IDs for attribute rules anyway, but we just need to enable editor tracking. So how, how about we do that stuff? So, uh, I think I added global ID, but just to make sure, we're just going to add the global ID on both classes. And then I'm going to go ahead and enable editor tracking on both classes as well, because these are required features for uh, branch versioning, and as a result, required for validation service that we're going to use. So the next thing we're going to do is we will switch the workspace version from traditional to branch. And I already switched it to branch just to make sure that we are in a branch workspace. And the reason is, uh, the act of adding an attribute, a batch calculation rule, will add four classes, four tables to the workspace and register them as branch version. And these are system maintained table for error storage for these batch calculation and validation rules. So we're going to go through that a little bit. So now, what do we need to do? We want to add an attribute rule on the point class. So let's go ahead and do that. Batch calculation, design, attribute rule. I'm gonna go ahead and do a batch calculation rule. And we're gonna call this calculate uh, centroid. And this will be an attribute rule that is in all subtypes. I don't have any subtypes on this class anyway. 
And this is a new to 26. You can assign an attribute tool to the shape field. That means I can edit my own geometry as a feature. So let's go ahead and open that expression and write this rule. So the rule will be a very simple rule. What do, what do we need to do? If I'm evaluating a point class, a point feature, I want you to find the parent polygon features uh, feature class, right? So we're gonna need to, need to do features by name. Uh, dollar sign dollar store, which is the workspace polygon class. Open that polygon class. Uh, what field do we want? We want only the global ID. Uh, I can say star, but I like to only request things that I need, and I don't really need any field. I only read the geometry, so I need to make sure this says true. And the next thing we needed to do is uh, let's create a geometry uh, point geometry equal geometry of the RSN geometry of the RSN feature. So this is the point geometry. This is my geometry, right? What we need to do next is get the polygon geometry, right? And uh, this is basically the first feature intersecting uh, with the FS polygon and the point geometry. So what we're doing here is intersecting the point geometry, which is me, with anything in the polygon class and we're getting the first result, and this could be null. So we need to tell the uh, attribute rule module this, hey, if this is null, don't do anything. Just return point geometry. And we will know in the Geo database to not do anything to your class, essentially, right? You can alternatively return an error here, which is something we won't do in another video, especially with a validation rule, where we're gonna create an error if the point is outside a polygon. That will be an interesting thing. And we're gonna reference the video here as well. So yeah, once we have the polygon geometry, all we need to do is just literally return centroid of the polygon geometry. And that, if I can type, that will be a point, right? So that's extremely valid. I'm gonna return the centroid of the polygon geometry and store it in the shape of my feature. So let's go ahead and do that. We're getting an error. Why? We missed something here, probably. On line six. Yeah, we added an extra color black that we don't need. That's it, save. And I want you to pay attention to the workspace while I save we will create four classes as a result of this operation, right? The point error, polygon error, line error, and object errors. And we need these systems because these will be used for the entire workspace. You can use it to create errors on the line class, on polygon object classes, and then uh, point classes, right? Uh, in this video, we won't really create any errors, but we're gonna, we need those to enable the validation capability to do the evaluation that we showed. So next step, publishing. So what do we do? We take these two classes, we add them to a brand new map, and we presume with the publishing. Make sure you have an enterprise that is at least 10.8.1. All right, in this particular case, it has to be 10.8.1 because we did the shape uh, property and this is not available in 10.8 and before. So 1081, or and if you want to write a basic batch calculation rule, that will work with 107 even, right? But just pay attention to the versioning. And I'm gonna make another video talking about the versioning of arcade and attribute rules. So yeah, this is my class. So I'm gonna call it attribute rule publishing. I need to publish this thing, right? So all we need to do is let's save our project and let's share as web layer. And uh, all right, so when we do that, let's give it a name. Uh, let's call it uh, Centroid Calculation Service, right? Give it any name. I'm gonna make it as feature service, has to be a feature service. Let's share it with my enterprise. And let's go to configuration. And all of a sudden, we have validation here. But there is no version management. That's why, because we forgot to register the brand as branch version. So let's go ahead and register those two classes as branch versioning. The moment I register them as branch versioning and try to republish again, let's close this. So now let's do it again, calculation service, feature, configuration, and now the process detects that, hey, you have a class that is registered as version. So your, your, uh, 
you're entitled to enable the version management service and the validation service as well. The validation was enabled because you have at least one batch calculation or validation rule on these classes. So we're going to do that. And all, all we need to do is just basically evaluate now and uh, analyze. We're going to get some errors. And that's fine. Let's fix them one by one. First of all, the registration. We're publishing by reference, so that's registration. Let's just go register this thing. Uh, service uh, data source. So we're going to register this thing. Share it. So this is just registering my Postgres database. Uh, and I forgot to mention that I was working with a Postgres instance. So you can work with any enterprise database, essentially. And that should do the trick. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is fix this thing. Shared uh, the shared instances. So enterprise came up with this model where you can mo move to a shared instance. Unfortunately, not all our uh, the capabilities are, are supported with this thing. So we need to move to a, a dedicated instances instead of the shared model. Right. And let's stick with three. Sure. And now if I analyze, we're going to get one remaining error. And this says validation error layers. That means you have to add all these tables in order to enable the validation capabilities. So all we need to do is basically take all these tables, drag them all the way here. Uh, the order doesn't matter, but I like to put all these errors, uh, the, these system tables or these uh, use, uh, the, the system maintain table at the end. You don't have to. And just like that, if I go back and analyze, we don't have any errors anymore. And now I am ready to publish. So let's go ahead and publish this class. All right, my feature service has been published. Now it's time to consume my new capability, my new feature class, my all that stuff. So I'm gonna go to portal and in content, you will just start seeing this feature service. And here's the thing. Don't add this whole thing to the map. Only add the classes you're interested in. So I'm going to add point class and polygon class. Forget about all these four. We're going to add them in a different manner where they are recognized by pro as an error layer group with validation errors. So I'm going to add a new brand new map and then call it attribute rule service, for example. All right. Attribute rules services. Awesome. So now... This is almost the last step. We work, uh, the batch calculation and validation rules work with the error inspector. And to, to enable the error inspector right here, we need to add the error layers. And you, all you need to do is just basically right click and add error layers. We will know that, oh, this is a batch calculation uh, supported class. So we'll enable the error layers. And this is how you correctly add the error layers. And these are the point errors, that all of that stuff with the symbology uh, that we discussed. These are pointing to the GDB classes that we basically published. So validation point errors. So now if you click on the error inspector, now you should see basically the error inspector and you will be able to evaluate batch calculation, validation, visible extent, full extent, X asynchronous, all that stuff. So let's go ahead and evaluate pretty much the full extent because that's what I'm interested in. And yeah, let's evaluate everything. And this also works in a version. You can uh, undo, redo. You can do all that stuff. So we go ahead and evaluate everything as we should. And just like that, we have evaluated, took a fraction of a second, We and all the points has been fixed to the centroid, guys. In another video, we're going to discuss validation rules and how to create errors in case these point features, for example, lay outside the polygon. I'm going to see you in the next one, guys. Goodbye. Thank you.